Gather around me, you brave sea dogs, and I'll tell you a tale of the sea. Believe what you will when I'm finished, but remember, no tale is free. Twenty years ago I was a pirate, aboard the Sabre, a swift, deadly ship. We were out of Port Royal, Jamaica, raiding Maine on that particular trip. I was hard at work in the galley, cutting bits from a big bacon slab, when I heard one of the older men talking, and I caught a bit of his gab. By gar, ye all be superstitious. I care not what any of you say. I see your crosses and amulets and medallions and your wren's feathers from last New Year's Day. You all believe in ghoulies and ghosties and things that rise out of the sea. And some of you still call on St. Elmo. Oh, I, you cannot fool me. I heard the stories before I signed articles. Even more I've endured since then. I know you've all heard it yourselves at least once, but listen up, and I'll tell you again. There's a ghost that visits the Sabre, and though she only comes one night a year, she never leaves alone in the morning, and where she goes is a place we all fear. She walks the deck at midnight, flaming hair in a gown of mist, her face a mask of fiery rage, her hand an icy fist. In life she was a lovely senorita, taken from a town along the main. Beaten and abused by a savage pirate crew, her torturers finally drove her insane. They kept her in chains below decks with little or nothing to eat. It was only after the worst was all over that they found the ship's rats were her meat. One night a scallywag came to take her. Like a fool he let loose her chains. And swinging him like a scythe blade, she decorated the bulkhead with his brains. Screaming then like a banshee, she ran out onto the deck. Startling the first pirate she came to, she turned his face into a mangled, bloody wreck. Her shrieks brought the watch to attention, and they soon cornered the little Spanish tart. And with a fine shot from his flintlock, the captain put a ball in her heart. If they'd pitched her into the sea, it'd been over. But they bound her and pulled her up with a jerk and hung her from the bunt on the mainmast to let the seagulls and the petrels do their work. Now seabirds be right hungry fellows. I can't stand their shrill screeching cries. But we all know that when they start eating, they begin with the lips and the eyes. She hung there through both the dog watches and the helm said he glimpsed her that night. But when the sun rose over the horizon, the little lady was nowhere in sight. They say they never found her body, not a rag or a thread from her gown. Some say she drifted up to heaven, but I think a squeamish crewman cut her down. But in your stories, she comes back for vengeance, taking a pirate on the anniversary of that night, and without any screams or blood or noise. She drags them off into the silvery moonlight. And tonight's the very night, ye all tell me. And it's the midnight watch that I've drawn. And I suppose ye expect me to be cowering and praying to God that I see dawn. Well, ye won't catch me singing hallelujahs. You're wearing some magic gee-gaw someplace. Just look for me in the morning and I'll be laughing right to your face. He smirked as he rose from the table, leaving behind a dozen other men, who, judging by the looks on their faces, believed they'd never see him again. I vowed to spend the night above decks. Being young, I wanted to see what I could see. But morning found me asleep on the hawser, and the ship was as quiet as can be. The men were noticeably silent. They had been that way since dawn. For when the morning watch had taken over, the laughing unbeliever was gone. Of him we found neither hide nor hair, but in truth it wasn't much of a loss. The sea deals harsh to a man without faith, and I think I'll just keep wearing the cross. I pray that it keeps me safe on the ocean, or if not, that it leads me to the light. For at dawn I board the saber again, 
and I stand the midnight watch tonight. She walks the deck at midnight, flaming Flaming hair hair in a gown of mist, her face face a mask of fiery rage, her hand an icy fist. 